I knew if I didn't stop, I was going to die. And I had three kids. I'd wake up, my beer sitting there in the stroller, and I'll drink it and then throw up. And I'll drink a full one and throw up again, right? The switch went off. Like, this is it, bro. I want a house. I want to see my kids. I want a dog again. I've, I've died a couple times from shooting up or whatever. And I know alcohol will kill every major organ in your body. It's not like I'm, uh, I got a plan to drink again. But when I buy a house, man, I'm getting, I'm sitting on my porch one day. You know, I might drink a beer. So what? Once a functioning alcoholic and opiate user, Buddy says he was able to turn off his addiction like a switch. And just like that, he picked up the phone and changed his life. But was it really that simple? Let's find out on this episode of Chopping It Up. My man, I appreciate you coming. I thank you for making time, buddy. Thank you for uh, inviting me. Yeah, yeah, well, I know you got a good story. Uh, yeah, I got a story. Yeah, yeah, well, everybody's got a story. So how long you been clean? Uh, February 23rd will be eight years. Eight years. And eight you years. haven't drank or... I haven't it? drank. And that was my biggest... Alcohol was my biggest downfall. Not saying... I mean, the other things were pretty bad, too. But I have... I have smoked, like, some weed, but I just don't... I can't even do that anymore, man. I tried, and I was like, oh, just like for my anxiety levels and all that crap. I thought that would help, but just cigarettes, man. Nicotine. That's my out. And caffeine. Yeah. It's like when I in- exhale that cigarette smoke, it's like I'm letting go anxiety and all that crap. I understand. In a sense. And know? the vape doesn't work the same. Vape shit, man. Vape makes my chest hurt. So I don't even right, that. right. So a drug of choice would be alcohol, you'd say? Uh, alcohol and heroin, yeah, opiates. Right. So you went down the oxy hole. You went down the same oxy crazy. Well, my mom. When my mom died, I think I was thirty. I was thirty. Yep, I was thirty when she died. And you know, these fuck these people left some. Uh, I didn't ever think I would have. I always said when I was growing up, I was like, man, I'm never gonna have a pill problem. I ain't never gonna mess with that heroin crap, man, right. meth and all that. I'm just gonna do the. I'll do some weed. I'm gonna drink my alcohol, and I'm good to go. But and my mom died, man. It's like a like a light switch went on and was like, hey, you need this to cope. And I did that for about 10 years and it got really bad. You know, when you, I had everything, man. I had a, I had a, I had a house, man. I had, a, I had my kids around me. I had a, I had a two car garage, I had a dog, I had a wife, I had a f- damn good job, you know, and then, man, Shit, I don't know, probably. Man, that shit hit me pretty quick because I was selling the house within months of after my mom died. You know what I'm saying? Uh, went straight to heroin or did you go to pills first? Well, they, you know, I had some shit left at my house. It was liquid Dilata and then, uh, you oh, know, I was God. putting that shit in the oven right front and then weren't drying it out and then snorting it and and then I uh, had a buddy of mine. Was like, Never heard anybody doing that. So the liquid, you just dried it out. Put it in the oven or, or the microwave. And you get the match clip, man. It's pure shit. And like a match clip. I mean, I was throwing up from, because I never did it before. Right. right. You know yeah. You're, that's a very powerful painkiller to start out with. Shit, man. My mom's funeral, man. I was all drunk and I was on that shit too. And I was just, I came, I remember talking in front of all, there's tons of people there, right? And I remember talking. I remember being shit faced because I that that morning my my wife was taking a taking a bath, right? And I was, uh, I was taking a piss and I was already fucking set, right? And I was pissing, man. I farted and fucking shit myself. I sneezed at the same time, right? No way. So when I sneezed, I'm all ladies in the bathtub right here. And I'm like, oh, shit, bro. That's how bad my anxiety was. And I was fucking stressed out. Right? He sneezed, farted, pissed, and shit yourself shit all myself. at the same time. Right in front of my wife taking a bath. Like, yeah. Our relationship's over. God, it's, it's amazing you can remember that, though. I remember you're... that day. Yeah, okay. That was so embarrassing you couldn't forget it. It was on 4th July. But also, it was your mother's... Yeah. Yeah, I remember all that shit, man. But uh yeah. And then uh I I you know, the pill that that shit ran out and then uh I had a buddy of mine we always talked because I was giving him some of that shit too because I didn't know I was just giving him the liquid stuff. I was like, Here you go, man. And then we ended up hooking up and started doing some crazier shit. Hey, you you, you wanna try this? Yeah, I'm gonna fuck try that shit. And I tried it and it was fucking like, whoa. This is when heroin was like, heroin. Your body's warm, you're fuzzy, and then you just don't think about nothing. That's what I needed at the time, I guess. I didn't want to think about nothing. Right. 
Now, you know, well, I did go on that alcohol run too. Like I got clean. I got I got clean off the heroin by myself. Right. I my my ex we got separated. Lost my kids. I lost my house. All that shit. Right. And I said, all right, fuck. It. I started drinking some vitamin waters, man. And I started drinking like Bud Light. I was like, all right, let me get a six pack. I drink these vitamin waters. I'm kicking this shit, right? Kicked it by myself. And then I just started drinking, man. Then it was like every day. I was going to a 12 pack, you know, 18 pack, and it was like 24 pack. And it was like, and then I used that. I drank every day, all the time. And then, I, and, you know, I went to uh, drinking in the morning when I got up and I just went to drinking at work, you know what I'm saying? And, I think we had that big snowstorm in February of 2016, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's it, February? Early February. We got like three feet of snow. Okay. And uh, so I was off work for like two weeks, man. The roads were shut down here. You couldn't even walk on the freaking sidewalk. So, and I was just, I got hammered and so hammered. And I was drinking the malt liquors. I was drinking like, they got these things called earthquakes and they were like, 13% 13% alcohol, and I was drinking them with a straw and the old English and the cold 45s and the malt slit, the was it slits malt liquor, whatever the shit is, man. The good, right. The good shit, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The nasty shit. The I, remember, shit. I remember them Them big bottles were very oh, popular back man. then. I hammered those fucking things, and they were so good. They still taste good. I can still taste them. Right. That's, That's why you won't drink anything, though. Like, I know we've gone out several times and you just refuse to go. Like, you just don't want to sit in that situation yet? Uh, I'll explain that in a minute. Okay. But it got so bad during that snowstorm, right? And when they finally cleared the roads and we were going back to work, man, I went back to work a couple of days and I was like, I wasn't drinking no water. It was just straight alcohol every day, right? So I got to work one day and I was, I was riding a bike to work too. Man, I drove him forever because my stupid, my stupid ass couldn't fix my life. But, uh. I started cramping up, man. I was at work, man. I was cramping up. My legs were cramping up real bad. My hands were like, I couldn't even, I had to do this to open up my, my fucking hands. Right? No water in your system at all. Dude, I went to the, I, I went to my boss. I was like, man, I got to go home. And he said, no, I need you to stay. I was like, I got to go, man. I can't, I got to go. Right. So I went, then I went, I was staying in a hotel then. Cause that's how that my life is. I was staying at, um, you know where uh, the buffet place used to be on Berryville Avenue, that hotel behind there? Yeah, yeah, Shoney's. Yeah, right behind there. I stayed. I was staying there, right? I got up the next morning. I was like, I couldn't sleep that night. I slept a little bit, but I got up the next morning. I was like, I got to go to the hospital. So uh, I got a buddy of mine. Kevin. I got Kevin to come pick me up. I remember old Kevin from Shockey. I do not. But I got him to pick me up, and he took me to the hospital, and they... they uh, Put, they put me in a room and you know my piss was black i'm talking black dude mm. like, i've never seen this shit before in my life right so they put me in a room start putting uh filling me up with some ivs and stuff man that shit was like liquid cocaine like it was like as soon as that shit started going through my system i felt like shit i'm ready to go right. get, I'm like, let me out of here i'm right, good right right but they kept me for like, man, they kept me for two and a half days, man. Just kept pumping me. That's how the artery was. They just kept that shit going through me. And then, yeah, I got out of there and uh, I went directly to the store and got some alcohol on the way home. And uh, a couple of days later, I'm like, fuck, I was drinking all night. Wake up in the middle of my, in the sleep and my beer sitting there with a straw and I'll drink it and then throw up and I'll drink a full one and throw up again, right? So finally I had enough and I was like, I called, I just, I got online, man. I called, um, called for some help, man. I had to reach out to somebody, get some help. And I don't, I don't remember who they were. I don't remember who I called, but they, uh, they helped me out. They were calling me back and, uh, I woke up the next morning to a phone call saying, uh, hey, the cab's outside to take you to the airport. I was like, what's this guy talking about, man? Hey. I started looking at my phone. I was like, oh, shit. So I had a beer. I had one beer. I had an open beer. I put one beer in my damn backpack, right? And I drank the other one for a while. The cab was outside. I packed, like, a couple of things on the way. One, I had one pair of shoes I had on and a pair of pants and, and fucking... Got in the cab, took me to Dulles, and that was it. I was on my way to California, yeah, start my different journey. So that's where you got clean, clean. That's when I got clean, clean. That was on uh, that was on the twenty second, 
of February. And I didn't, I didn't really, 23rd was the day, like, I didn't have anything, so I go with 23rd. Oh, yeah, 2016. Mm-hmm. That's good. Yeah, yeah. So, I wonder why you went from opiates to alcohol in such a way, because opiates are almost opposite in the way of you don't feel that pain that you get from the over the the thrown. I don't know. I guess it's all related. You do throw up. You do get all that. But to me, that's weird. I've never really seen that. Is it because alcohol is easier to get? It was really easier to get and cheaper. Yeah. And it was like, I like to taste alcohol. I still do, man. Like, I, I drink shit out, out of it if I had it right now. But. How would people compare you now to you then, like, as far as your attitude goes? Because I know you're funny, witty, you're empathetic, you know what I'm saying? You're a nice person. Were you totally different? No, same. I was I was more isolated, like, deep into it, you know. I isolated for a few years, you know what I mean, from everybody. Yeah, I know exactly what that's Kids, like. family, uh, friends. Didn't get depressed during all that? Yeah, yeah. That's the worst yeah. part of it, isn't it? My oldest daughter, she came down one time and um and then my niece too, man. My niece. They're like good friends and growing up and they're like, Why is dad always crying? Because you know, I cried a lot, man. I don't know why I get all drunk and shit and I'd start getting in my feelings and I'd be like, Why is my life like this? You're right. so, you know, and fuck you know, it's like uh Yeah. And it's crazy. We put ourselves in that room and then wonder why we feel that way. But it's because of everything we're doing ourselves and being lonely by itself is depressing. Yeah, I mean, I I didn't have to be lonely. No. You know what I mean? That's my point. Because I had, like, the women were there. Family was there. I I got tons of friends. You know, I got you. You're, like, one. And I got, like, Jimmy. He's, like, two. But I have friends, you know what I'm saying? But there's only, like, you and Jimmy who I really, like, talk to all the time. Right. But. You also have to have a, friendship takes a while to build, and then you have to obtain a trust for somebody or not. I learned to expect people to be who they are. One thing I knew about you, I knew you were going to be here. You said you was going to be here, I knew you was going to be here, I knew you'd be here on time. Nice. And after a while, like, say you learn how people are, you know? So yeah, man, that's uh that's something I respect too, because that's what made me wonder about like how different was you? Because I'm super honest now. I used to lie and just do some cruddy shit. I mean, I don't know. I never really. I mean, I hid my using and crap from people. I wouldn't say that. I guess that's lying, but it was just. That's it. That was just right, it, but you weren't you weren't going to their house and stealing money for pills. No, you weren't. No, you weren't. I mean, you weren't. No. You know. No, I mean, never stole any pills, never stole any alcohol. Never been to jail? Yeah. Okay, what did you go to jail for? Oh, shit. I had a couple DUIs I went to jail for. I had some assault charges I went to jail for. And um, that's it. Like how much time you served? Most you did. Most I did. 90 days. And that was the uh, that was the only, like from when I was thirteen, until I did those ninety days, that was the longest sober period in my life. So twenty seven years of using, pretty much every day of the week. Even when I was thirteen, it was like Scotch Guard, gasoline, Robitussin. Okay, and we got it. You started bro. early, and and then thirteen was when I first smoked weed. Like my boy, uh, we droop. My sisters had a big party on Virginia Avenue in front of Royal. Like my mom was at work. She's coming home the next day, but hey, my sisters are having a big ass party, right? And it was a big party. And I was down in the basement and I smoked my first joint. And I was lit. And then, uh, yeah, but like when I was skateboarding, I was like 11, 12, man. We were, yeah, we were bad. So what's the Scotch card? Go through that. How's that work? What's Scotch that make card, you feel man, like? We used to get underneath the tunnels on our skateboards. And we, I mean, shit, man, because we, our skateboards were all over the front row, and we would get underneath the tunnels where Old Roses was. And you get Scotch Guard, and you spray it in a can, you just hub it like you would gasoline, and it's just like a whoop, 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 crap, you know. So the vapors. Yeah, the vapors. So, so huffing gas, huffing anything like that, they would put you. I remember my cousins did that in Tennessee, and uh, they was partying, and there was a motorcycle in the garage, and they would sit on the seat and huff until there was no gas left. 
Like you, could, there was no gas left in the gas tank. You couldn't even <coughs> smell gas when you opened the gas tank. It was that fucking dry. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we did butane. I remember doing butane, but I think the first thing I ever got high on was definitely weed. Yeah. Probably alcohol that I drank a beer from my dad or something. Yeah. So how about your parents? Like, were your parents users? Were you ever, right? you said being around it as a kid, was other people around it? Was the kids an influence or family? No, nah, man. Nobody. My mom, my mom would party with her friend, like, and they play cards and drink, but they never, she never smoked no, my mom didn't smoke no weed until I got her high before she died. Okay. Like she wanted to say, hey, this Let's get, go down here and get a joint from what's his name. And then, like, she had cancer and shit. But other than that, no, my, I'm never around my dad. I've seen my dad, like, three times all my life. And um, my sisters, like, they party, like, drinking, but they don't, you know. Nah, I wasn't around it like that. Hmm. Nah. So I also know that you're a, you're a dedicated father, which I admire and respect completely. Do you think your dad not being there was... Something that made that who you are that way? Because uh, I know you also said it earlier, like you wasn't part of your kid's life when you were strung out, but now you're yeah. very strong into it. Like, Yeah, I told myself, like, oh, it's giving me cold chills. I, gave, I told myself a long time ago, I was like, I'm not going to be, I want, I'm not going to be like my dad was and like let my, my ex-wife or whatever keep me from the kids. I think that's what my mom did. Okay. She hated because I'm a junior, right? And she she never called me Willie. She never called me. It was Buddy. Always, one hundred percent. Like never heard her say that name. No life. way did she like you and Dad was the same name or referred to in the uh, same way. Huh. I remember okay. one time, like she he would try. I remember when we were younger, like he would try to contact, and maybe she didn't want him to, and then like. Whenever we would talk about we wanting to go down there, and we say, I mean, she would get upset. Like he was a real. I guess he did something pretty bad to her. He must have done something pretty bad there, or she just felt like he was going to be a super horrible influence, or yeah, a combination of both. Could be. I don't know. Right. Because I know when I was younger, my dad tried to take me to Alaska because he lived in Alaska. Like no shit. I was like four or five, and then my mom caught him before we could. Like we were getting ready to go to the airport. My mom called him before we left, and and I didn't go. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, he lived up there for about 10 years, and he came back. I think I seen him when he came back once. And then uh, I took my kids to see him a few years ago. Oh, shit, more than a few years ago. God dang, I was, I was pretty drunk then. But I took my kids to go see him one time just to meet him. They had a good time. They liked him. He was he he was cool. Then you were fucked up in the game at that time with, yeah, man, with the alcohol. Oh, I got drank all the way down North Carolina. Kids and driving there. and everything. Oh, cool, and there, just all the way, all the way back. Yeah. So you're definitely a functioning alcoholic, though. Definitely a functioning alcoholic, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I functioned for so long until you get to that that hole where you can. You jump off, it don't make no noise anymore. My grandfather did his whole life. Yeah. Started at 13, died 62, drank every day. Yeah. And then just, I mean, he was, he has kids and grandkids and took care of a house and everything. But his mornings were not good and his nights were. Yeah, pretty hectic. Yeah, man, pretty hectic, pretty chaotic for <laughs> sure, man. For yeah. sure. So what do you do now? Like, what do you do now that makes you able to not drink like i know you're going to restaurants and you're around alcohol all the time because it's everywhere it's not like hard to get all right so when i went to california and i went through the whole program intensive in like i was in there you couldn't go nowhere right like right you're, therapeutic you're in, you're in prison but it was a nice prison right luxury prison we got an in-ground pool jacuzzi big ass house and um I went to the outpatient. I mean, it was on the coast. It was on California, Southern California, San Clemente, Dana Point. And um, we still, we got to walk around. So we went out walking around, man. You go in all the stores out there. You're talking Rite Aid, CVS, just shelves full of liquor. I mean, they sell liquor in okay. back then, right? So I started using it as my uh, my coping mechanism. Like I'd be like, I would per I would be like, oh, I like to have some of that. You know what I mean? Oh, I remember that, and I would uh, just just act like I act like I wasn't upset with not 
using alcohol or some shit. You know what I mean? I would pretend like, yeah, I remember. I would remember how I used it. I would pretend like I was using it. But I mean, I even went to bars out there. We would go to bars and we drink cokes. We get free cokes, or whatever. And then I did that one night, man. And it was that was sketchy, dude. And then I never went back there. But um, when I came back, my sisters really didn't want to drink around me. And there was family events because they drink, right? Right. My one sister and they drink, and I was like, ah, man, it's not a big deal, not a big deal. And it kind of was a big deal because I would separate myself from like I didn't go out there and really want to be around it. Right. But as the years went by, I was just around it, and that was always my my coping mechanism was was not hate it, just you know I would I was all right with it. I, hmm. I made myself all right with it. But you were able just to turn that switch off at one point. I mean, that's how it works, man. That's yes, how you have to. Works, you have man. to find the disgust. You gotta find either. It went on because I needed it, and it went off because I knew if I didn't stop, I was gonna die. And I had three kids. You know what I mean? Three kids is what got me through it, and then it's like. And it just went off. And when I called those people that night, it was like, hey, the switch went off. Like, this is it, bro. I'm, I'm done with alcohol and all this shit, man. I got, I want a house. I want to see my kids. I want a dog again. It's, you know, That's hard to do for some people. I'm still working on it, bro. We're eight no, years. I'm not saying nobody that you don't struggle. We all struggle. But it's very hard for people to turn it off that way. Yeah, I know. Like through a rehab or on the street without a serious consequence. What I would tell anybody who gets clean, sober, whatever, is don't forget. Like once you get like 30, 60, 90 days, months, a year, don't forget where you were. And I told us, I mentored a lot of people. I house managed three houses in California. And I did the whole, uh, I did intakes at a detox center. You know, I was handing out meds to people. I, mean, okay. I was checking their vitals. I was checking their bags. Um, And I always tell them, I mean, I'll save some lives. I've had some friends that died from out there since then. But, I mean, everybody came to me. Like, I was their mentor. Like, this, good, this fucking guy's rocking it, man. Right. Like, I was about rocking it. You know what I mean? I was done with it. And I would always tell everybody, just don't forget, man. Don't forget where you were. Because I'm going to tell you right now, I've I've died a couple times from, you know, shooting up or whatever. And I know alcohol will kill every major organ in your body. And I, I didn't know that until I went out there and read that shit. And I was like, every major organ in your body, it attacks that and will kill that. And then... I just don't forget, man. I don't forget. Like, I keep telling myself I do this dumb shit. I don't know. It may happen one day. It may not. It's not like I'm, uh, I got a plan to drink again. But when I buy a house, man, I'm getting, I'm sitting on my porch one day. You know, I might drink a beer. So what? But it's, there, it, it'll never, I'll never let it grab a hold to me like it did back then. Because I know how to handle it now. I got tools, man. They give you tools when you go to places like yeah, that. Yeah, for sure. And you use those tools. No matter if you're going to use them right then or there, like you remember them though, keep them. Right. And it doesn't matter how you label them or what compartment you put them in, as long as it works for you. Yeah. For sure. However, you can compare it to whatever else doesn't matter. Yeah. But once you get out of it, you do realize that it's so much better just being, I mean, I smoke weed every day. I'm not ashamed of it. It helps me to cope with life and the shit that is around me. And I have a beer or two, mm. but those things don't destroy my life. Right. You know what I'm saying? Xanax will, the, you know, I'll start shooting needles, put my needles in my arm again. That yeah. will too. We're done. We're probably dead. So that's what you were shooting was the lauded, the same good nah. stuff that you liked then. This was nah. pre-California too, right? So everything in California, you were clean. Yeah. And then everything before that was here, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, so and you're yeah. from this area. You're right. Yeah, I grew up in Front Royal. Okay. Born, born in North Carolina, Wilmington. Moved up here in, in the '80s, early '80s. My mom worked at Dupont, or whatever, and they transferred her up here. Okay, I remember a lot of people working at Dupont. It's right. decent money. Right. She she worked there for like 25 years. 25. Oh, years okay. For the cancer thing, and uh, yeah, then I uh, got through went uh, with Front Royal. I decided to move 
to Winchester was Front Rolls. It's a mess. And then I just been around Winchester, Stephen City. You know, I like it. I like it here. And you're not in contact with any of those people from 20 years ago now, obviously. Uh, some of them. You know, I see some of them. I talk to some of them, but it, they. It's funny because they know. They know I don't. I don't do anything, right? So I think they try to keep their distance. I don't know. Right. Maybe I don't fit their lifestyle. Maybe. Yeah, it's know. interesting to see how you grow apart. And uh, when you get to a certain spot where you can measure certain things, like I see the guys that I got into all that shit in when I was younger, and then I kind of see where they are now, or I hear a certain thing about them here or there, and that, that gives you a measuring stick, doesn't it? Yeah. I feel like it gives you a little measuring stick to kind of see – to compare where you started to where you are, and then you're automatically going to make that comparison to the people that you were doing it with. Yeah. I stay away from most of them. I still, some of them are close, like close to the family. So I, did, I still see some of them, but they know, they know what I went through. So they don't, no one pushes any of that crap on me. Right. No. Yeah. Yeah. And I still get random texts out of nowhere. Like, you want some Coke? Yeah, I'm right. like, bitch, I ain't did coke for a long time. I never asked you for no coke, never wanted. What are you even hitting me out of the blue Here, like what, that for? What else got that shit got in it? That's what, that's what it? I, look, that's what I told. So I got custody of one of my, this is probably the, the biggest thing out of me getting sober is me getting my a custody of one of my daughters, like Ireland. Oh, my God, man. This girl was me when I was in the deepest of my addiction. She had the same attitude, like, I don't give a fuck. And she was bad when I got her, man. She was ruined, man, ruined. Hmm. Man, when I got her, that was the biggest accomplishment I've ever had in my life, I think. And today, to this, to right now, today, this girl is an angel, man. She ain't touched no alcohol, man, because she used to sneak that shit in the house, man. And I kept telling her. And telling her and telling her, if you're going to end up in a bad place, you know, doing that. You you're, you're, you're could kill you. You're out here on the street, man. You're young. You're beautiful. Something could happen to you. You might just settle it down, man. And, uh, man, she's an angel today, man. Yeah, but you didn't just sit down one time and do that. You didn't tell her them things one time, but no. she just straightened the fuck up. No, I did it over. Over and over and over. And over. For how many years? Oh. Uh, so I remember when you first got her. I remember the stories of the shit she was doing. It was it was it was nine months straight, and then she got put on like she got put on probation, and then she was still screwing up. I remember that. And then the other people were stepping in. They seen. They knew. Cause I told them like, "Hey, I'm sober as crap, man." And, and then I need I need I need your help. Like, you help me. And this one lady stepped in from the from the city of Winchester, man, and she told she was stern with my daughter and she was uh I think they scared her. And I think she just I don't know, like this light switch went on. Like mm -hmm. she started listening. And uh What were the consequences she was facing? She uh she was just facing jail like at, at sixteen. Like she was facing she had cult. she was just facing jail. That's what she was facing. Sucks as a dad, though, doesn't it? To be yeah. in that position and looking at her and knowing that she might have to go in there. Yeah, or, you don't die, want, or die. Right, you don't want that for your kid. No, nah, man. Especially on my watch, man. Cause, right. Because I knew everything. She always, think, she always thought she was sneaking shit from me. I'm like, man, I can look at you right now. Right. It's just like me looking in a mirror eight years ago. What are you doing? Come on. Hey, I ain't stupid. Hey, I have buddies that still do the same thing. I take some Xanaxes and call me all slurring. And I'm like, do you really think that I don't know? Yeah. Like, are you serious? How do you think I don't know? Right. But yeah, man, uh, I think that the, the father thing I think is admirable as hell. My buddy James is very much that way too. Very active in his daughter's life. You know what I mean? And yeah. I think that's important. Uh, I didn't even realize how important things like that was until I was older. I had my kids way too young. Yeah, me too. Way too irresponsible. Mm -hmm. You know. Definitely. Now I'm involved more with every inch of what they'll let me be involved with. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If you don't want me there, cool, I'm not there, man. But everything my daughter's let me into her life around lately, I'm so grateful for that, man. Right. That time to spend with her. 
We had to go look for a car. I hated bit being there. I hated, I don't like doing that shit. But every moment I was with her was a great moment. It was awesome. I wasn't mad or irritated or angry. I've been able to start setting my mind to a different place and my expectations of shit. Yeah. I think, uh, I think we were selfish. I'm we were, still selfish. We, well, we, I mean, I still am a little bit, but I mean, not much, man. But I was selfish back then because I was more worried about, and that's what addiction does to you anyway. Like it, it, you got to fill your needs before anyone else's needs. Absolutely. I mean? And uh, now it's just like you know, I, don't know, I give like my girlfriend and my daughter at home, and I give anything to my two other daughters too. I just don't see them as much because they're in different states. But um, they, the two at my house, they get everything before I do, and it's like that's just what I do now. I don't know. I got. I put. I mean, I was putting people before me. When I got sober, I was putting people before me a lot, and I still do it today. But I just, I keep saying like, all right, I'm gonna do this shit for me. And so, I, what I do for me is I'll go buy me something for my Jeep, or you know, I will just go buy me something, right. and then that's that's me. But I still gotta do those two all day every day. Yeah, but man, if you had to give a reason for why you get up every day and go to work and do what you do, what's that reason? It's gonna be my. My kids. Your fucking kids, bro. Yeah. All day. Like, there's no question. Yes, yeah, because, you know, I, my mom left some st- some shit behind for me because she knew she was passing. I, I We took care of her. Me and my ex-wife took care of her for a year at home. And she made, a, made sure I had a house and everything I needed when she was gone. And it, that's kind of, that's what I need to do. That's my goal now. That's what I need to do. I need a house. For my, all my kids, it needs to be big enough for any of them to come there and live if you need a, a roof. You know what I mean? Because I know how that shit is. And um, that's my biggest goal right now. It's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, I met you four or five years ago, and your credit was shit. Where's your credit at now? Oh, credit's good, man. Yeah, you've been building that shit up. I mean, right? I got too many credit cards, but I got to get rid of them, but. I don't have a problem with buying anything. I don't have a problem with being having money in my bank. You know what I mean? I, I haven't had a negative. I mean, would it? Go, go, Gadget. I'm going to <laughs> My bank account hasn't been negative for eight years. That feels good in itself, though, doesn't it? Hell I yeah, mean, that's man. a success for people like Look, us. Look, dude, I start stressed out, man. Shit, I only got $800 in the bank. Feel that, Fuck, man. What I feel that. Do? bro. I know how much money comes out of my account every month automatically, and I know when it gets to a certain number, yeah, I'm like, like I'm in trouble, bro. I gotta go do something, sell something. I'm pimping myself out for tattoos or something, right? But yeah, I, but it's it's definitely a whole different thing because uh, uh, I never had money when I was you know using every dollar I had went to dope. Yeah. And I ran out of money, and then I ran out of dope, and then I needed more money to get more dope, and it was just that circle all the time. Yeah. And I would run my electric cord out my back door into the next door neighbor's outside plug just to turn my lights on if I had to, so I could get high. Yeah, it's bad. Shit sucks. So yeah, man, you got to learn to rebuild all that shit to yeah. to be able to actually live life and be satisfied too. Like you don't have everything in the world, but you're happy where you're at, right? I don't have everything in the world. And I'm not ever going to have everything in the world. It's not just, about just, that, though. I just got a goal. If you have a goal, I think, you can be content with that as long as you're moving forward to that goal, which makes it, I'm moving forward to that goal. Like, I used, you know, I'm, I got an office job. I mean, I work a lot of hours. I got an office job. I mean, I'm super good at it. People depend on me. Guys that, you know, I got a whole facility that depends on me depends on me you know what i mean if i don't do my job these guys won't work so i mean i like having that responsibility and it keep that's what keeps me like focused my job and then my daughter at home it, that that keeps me like super focused as well i think we're made to be busy like aren't humans made to be busy aren't we made to be doing stuff i would think so right because uh, we're busy body people you and i both we don't yeah. We don't take much time to just sit down and do nothing. I got to do something. Every I have day. to be doing something, too. It's like I, I try to quit smoking cigarettes. Um, first of the year, I quit for two weeks, and I was like, girlfriend's stressing me out, man. When and got a pack of cigarettes. And I'm thinking, you know, it's hard because you're inside, right? I ain't got nothing to do. 
I need something to do. Try putting a puzzle together, you know, try try to do anything indoors because it's so freaking cold outside. And um, I ended up buying a pack of cigarettes. And um, I'm going to try again in the summer when I'm outside. I think that's going to be it. But, yeah, we always got to have something to do. You've been trying to quit smoking ever since I've known you. Yeah, I quit for like eight months at one time. I mean, don't matter me, I haven't even tried to quit. It's fucking tough, man. It's a bitch. Yeah. And I hate them. I do dislike them. I dislike the ashes that fall on me. I dislike the smell that they leave. But I just haven't found the disgust yet. They haven't Ugh. put me in a jail cell or made me crash a car, so I don't, you know. know that's funny. Fucking terrible. Yeah, when I was locked up, I had no problem quit. Man, you're not going to get them, right? I didn't have anxieties from not having them, didn't right. care. Well, I don't right. need a cigarette. I don't like, oh, no, I don't, oh, I gotta break out of here. I need but, a cigarette. Because you your know? choice was taken away, though. Right. right That's here. the difference. It's your right choice was taken away. So, this is a big thing that I've been working on is like how your body produces dopamine and how we get through the days. You know, one of the reasons for the name of the channel being Spanking Monkeys is because I think we're savages. Mm-hmm. We're savage at heart. We're not made to be stimulated the way we are. We're made to. Go hit that chick over the head, grab her by her ponytail, and drag yeah. her back to the cave we built. And we're yeah. supposed to get dopamine off of that. That's supposed to satisfy us in life. But now we're getting it from this. We're playing games. We're watching TikToks. We're spending so much time looking at the dumb shit that's going on that's giving us a 7-8. It's a delauded. Mm-hmm. And now when I got a pain that's work, then I need to get to work. I'm not getting the satisfaction because it's the satisfaction of an aspirin. So I've cut a lot of that shit out for those reasons just to see if it made sense right. you know because people talk about doing dopamine uh, uh, detoxes which is basically what that is put your phone down stay away from them instant dopamine things that you get because mm. it's kind of like drugs that's what made me start thinking about it because it's kind of like drugs how many times are you just sitting there doing nothing what do you do pick up your phone you don't care about what's on the phone you don't need to go over there and look at that phone but your brain it's telling you to go back and look at it because it's going to get them dopamine hits that it wants the same way I told you to go to the crack man or the dope man or right. the alcohol store. I get those from music, too. I love music, and mm-hmm. I can't cut. That's one thing I haven't cut out. If I go outside to do something, it's got to be. Earbud. So another interesting music. point about that that I don't think I've said yet on this is uh, when I was in the hole, used to do a lot of hole time. I got in a lot of trouble when I was younger. We mm-hmm. were allowed to have our radios back then. So... uh the radio was like one of the only things that would stimulate you, me to this point of giddiness. Like some music would come up, be like, yeah, you know, you're putting a song oh, on, you're, you're fucking yeah, yeah. bouncing around the room and you're like, yeah, you know, Molly Crew, whatever the fuck it is. Everybody in the block can hear me singing the song. and I don't care. Right. But that's so hard to achieve that feeling when you're sitting in that cold, dark cell for nine months and you're getting out an hour a day. Like it's hard to find that. So I remember feeling that way since I've turned off the TikToks. I didn't watch TikTok anyway, but since I've stopped scrolling so much, whatever Mm -hmm. it is, stopped watching YouTube on my TV, stopped doing all that so much, I just turned the music on. And within like the first three or four days, that giddiness was there. I was with my headphones on. I was editing. I'd be producing something or whatever, and I would turn the music on and I would get that giddiness again. And that made me realize that this is real, like that you're getting that dopamine in the same way, but you you can make your body do it Mm -hmm. if you cut the other shit out. Yeah. I don't know. I just thought it was interesting. It is. I remember you you mentioned that a few months ago. I was like, I get it. Right. So again, that's how long we've been. I've been working on that and Mm -hmm. thinking about that. It's not like, and when I learn something, I want y'all to learn it too. I want, if I find it interesting, I hope y'all find it interesting and, and maybe it helps. Because it has made me to where, because I used to get up in the morning and I would uh, uh, watch TV or look at some dumb shit for three or four hours. And then I'm like, oh, God, now I got to do this and that and I don't have as much time. I, I just started turning all that shit off. I watch one little show in the morning. It's like 40 minutes and I turn everything off. And I won't sit there very long before I get up and go do something. Mm-hmm. And now I'm stimulated by the things that are productive. I'm stimulated by finishing the tattoo. I'm stimulated by producing a video. I'm stimulated by making an appointment for someone to do this. Like, that's exciting for me that you actually wanted to come today. I didn't really want to come. Yeah, well, tell shit. (laughs) (laughs) But I just think it's interesting that you can turn all that stuff around and learn how to make your body work for you in a better way. Yeah. Instead of saying, let me shove this pill in my throat. Let me drink this bottle of whatever. 
You know what I mean? That's not necessary. And I still smoke weed. Yes, I haven't figured it all out, but this is a learning process for all of us, right? Look, man, I don't know. Weed's not the same as... Weed's just not the same as alcohol and opiates and shit like that, man. I just don't see weed as being a killer. Like... Like killing your body or killing your soul or killing your mind. I don't. I just. I, but I do see alcohol and pills and heroin and and meth doing that to people. It yes, just kills you. It takes your. It just takes your soul out, man. You're not even you anymore. You just. Your soul's gone. Yeah. You gotta find it. You know what I mean? That shit's bad for you. Yeah, it definitely manipulates who you are. Definitely. And I don't think the weed does that. So no. I've never heard it described that way. I think that's interesting. Okay. Uh, just like, cause it is your soul. It is your fucking character, man. Your mm -hmm. character literally changes. Yeah. Who you are, who you care about, what you do changes. Totally. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's like that demon, that monkey on your back, that demon on your back that just. Yeah. Speaking to... of those, you ever you ever heard those? Like when you were in your addiction, did you ever hear? Did you ever meet any of those demons? Mm -mm. No. Wait. So you seen man, shadow people? You want to hear some shit? All right. So. I'm staying with my sister. We lived on, it's the Stephen City, right? So I'm on her couch. This was, you know, a couple of years before, you know, I was I was broke, man. I, I don't think I had a job. I didn't have a driver's license. didn't have shit, right? I didn't have my kids. I was paying child support. Or, I don't know. It was just like, it was rough, right? And I was drinking. I got to a point where, oh, no, I stopped drinking, right? I didn't have any money, right? So I didn't have any money. And that first night, I didn't drink anything, right? I'm on my sister's couch because that's where I slept. And I started hearing these, like, these noises, man, and these shadows, bro. And I'm wide awake, man. And I'm fucking scared, right? Okay. Like, I'm scared shitless. Right. And something's fucking in here. I went upstairs, bro, to my sister's room. And I was like, just to check and, like, see if it, make sure it wasn't her, like, walking around. Dude. And I, was, I when I went out to California, I had this other dude that drank, man, and he told me the same shit. And we fucking clicked there for a few minutes talking about these demons that we had. It was freaking, it was fucking freaky, man. It scared the shit out of me. I don't get scared much, but that fucking shit scared the shit out of me. And then that's even bro. weirder, like it's having the same dream. Two people dream the same thing and you could talk about it. That's a little bit freaky in itself, right? Well, when you go out there, man, you're surrounded by hundreds of people in 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 addiction because it was just like a whole society of where I was it was just everywhere it was a recovery um, I don't know recovery was everywhere out there right and it probably still is but it was just like everyone had something that pertained to you or you could relate to in a sense it didn't have to be the exact same thing but you could relate to it you know what I mean that's why you went out there and you, I mean I went to meetings fucking seven days a week sometimes twice a day and we would walk to these meetings. There would be people there, but you, you always listen to people's story. And if you listen to their story, you heard some of that story in in you. You know what I mean? And that's why, like, it was they were big on like going around a circle or even at meetings. Like, hey, you know, I got to a point where I well, before I was like, I had my knees on, my hands on my you know my knees, and I, my head was down all the time when I was first went out there, and it was just like. Months later, I was like, man, I was fucking, I was like, I was speaking, man. I was telling mm -hmm. people about this, telling people about that. I had people from who I grew up with calling me out there, asking me for advice. You know what I mean? Like, because they knew what I did. And, you know, it's a, it's a good thing, man. It was a good thing for me. In all ways, too, because yeah. you got to change your life, change your kid's life. And then the people that still call you and ask you questions. Yeah, they still do. It, it, it's part of your purpose. Yeah, that's the way I said. That's what I thought when I first got back to it. I was like, man, I'm, I'm a, you know, I haven't been to a meeting since I've been back here. Eight years. I haven't huh. been to a meeting. Or no, no, I've been back here for six and a half years. Not a meeting one. But I did get my buddy, uh, I did get one guy sober here. He's seen what I did. And I got him a trip out to California too, right? And uh, Kyle came back and he hasn't drank alcohol since. So he's probably, man, he's probably got like fuck, four. He probably got four or five years. So nice. Like, yeah, 
That's cool because he was heading down the same road. Bro, it's so it's so many people that you root for that you see doing the wrong shit that you've probably already done, and you root for them and you try to help them, and sometimes they just don't take it. Right, but I get I let them. I gave them something. Yeah, but when they do take it, it's satisfying. Right. Just remember, like like, like I said, like remember when people give you the tools because you put those tools in your pocket and say you're not ready. That's cool, man. If you're not ready, you're not ready. Because if you're not ready, don't even try. Right. You know what I mean? But if you're ready, you know, do it and just, just pull them tool out. You can tool, you don't have to pull all the tools out. Just pull one out and try that tool for, you know, a couple of days, whatever. And then they start combining all those tools and, and then everything just See clicks, what works. Man. You gotta figure out what works first. Yeah, I need to go back out to California one day. I want to go. I, wanna, I got a buddy out there too, man. He won't do one of these because he's ex Sereno. Uh, he said they would green light him as soon as I put him on here, so he won't do it. But I'd still like to go out there and go around with him and check I out California. I've never been there, dude. I mean, we could go. I could, we could go out and get me cool chill. I'll go out there and talk to all these people that helped me out there because I got I got a tattoo of. Uh, Beasy, Beasy was the guy who like gave me a job, gave me house management. You know what I mean? Let me and gave me electrical side work whenever I needed it. You know, worked at his facility. Beasy is really the guy who helped me further my my cause, man. And if it wasn't for him, who knows? Like I'm, I may have not, I may not have stayed out there longer. I may have came back six months later after I went. And it may have been, it might have been uh, going back to the old ways. Who knows? Right. Well, what I do know is that guy, that guy, just, he did a lot for me. And I got him tattooed on my leg and it always be there. Oh, shit. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, man. That's an important. You remember that big ass bald head? That's an in person. That's an important goatee, person that you're going to. Goatee guy on my back of my calf. Y'all remember him? Nah, bro, but I've looked at so many tattoos, mm. you know. Remember, I, oh, one time I wanted you to put a, a body on him. Okay. In a flannel. He probably said that. Yeah, yeah. We can he, still do that. Because he's like, man, he looks, he's Hawaiian. So he would look like good in a flannel or something. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, he's the one who really likes Either way, man. Yeah, I'd like to see California too. California's uh, cool. My, my idea is to be able to take this across country and go to be able to, but like, I'm not going all the way to California for one interview. That would be stupid. Nah, man. You'd have to drive, man. You'd have to pull this thing out there and do it. Yeah, yeah, but I would pull it across the country. Like, yeah, I would want to stop off across the country and hit some people up. And map, be like, map it out, man. Hit these places that you know. When you contact these places who have these um these treatment centers or whatever, man. You, if you wanted to do the whole story thing and let some of these people tell their story, even they could be old people, young people. Young people have stories. You know, and then the old people have some really good stories. Yeah, too. for real. This uh. This little series right here that's going to kick this off is going to be like 14 videos and probably youngest might be 23. Mm -hmm. And we're probably the oldest, 50s. I don't know. What? <laughs> I'll, I'll be Wait like 48 this year, man. Bullshit. Are we 47 right now? I'm pretty sure, bro. Yeah, dang. Wow. But yeah, and then I got I got some other great people coming. The one chick survived a car, a, a car a plane crash. That's cool. Like I not thought, cool, but yeah, she's got a great cool. story. So I can't wait to talk to her. That's nice. But yeah, man, I wanted to get you on and uh, because I know you have been able to navigate life after addiction, and that's one of the hardest things. Like sometimes just quitting isn't enough because mm. you still find some other hole to go dig yourself into that makes you not productive. Yeah. Or, or not be able to do the things that you really want to do. You know, and I'm learning a lot from doing these because there's certain things that seem to shape everybody's life. And it's, there's like, there's similarities. And then of course, childhood's one of them, you know? Mm -hmm. And then, uh, that's a big thing, you know, so, something usually happened somewhere. Yeah. And then there's certain things that happened to certain people's childhoods that turned them completely away from that. And they never did it at all. And went to something different or uh, didn't have a mother or father and now are a great mother or father. Um, mm -hmm. And some, did, some didn't like, you know, it's just cool to identify with everybody in a certain way and, and learn. I want to learn from what people are doing. Like, how are y'all doing it? And then I go in and I'm editing and I'm learning even more because I watch it three or four times. Mm -hmm. So by the time I'm done posting your video, I, I, I know everything you said. 
three or four times that shit's in my head, I sleep thinking about it. And you think about like all these videos, how many people you're going to help if they see these videos. Right. And if it's just, if anybody can use this kind of like a, I don't want it to be an AA meeting because I'm not much on that setting. I never liked that setting a lot. Um, But if it's something somebody can just put on and listen to or watch and it helps them to fucking figure something out for the day, man, I'm all about that. Because there's so many times I didn't have anything to refer to. I just sat in a cell and had to deal with it on my own. You know what I mean? Nobody was there telling me. And I've learned a lot from videos that I watch about people like how to unfuck your life. You know, these are the things you're doing wrong if you did it this way. And some of them was like, ah. But some of them really did seem to change what I've been doing, and I'm happier for it. Mm -hmm. I want to spread that love. I want to spread that education as much as I can. That's good, man. That's good. I've seen you grow, too. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was wilding out. When we first met, though, I was pretty clean, but then I wilded out somewhere in the middle there. Yeah, I mean, no. I mean, like, you you were wild, like. I was unsure about you when I first met you, but then like, you know, getting to know you took, you know, it took a while, but then I got to know you and it's like, that's cool, man. Hmm, so what was your first impression that day when uh, me and Alex come walking over there to your little office uh, in the warehouse? First impression, I was like, oh, this big motherfucker ain't gonna come in here and run his fuck my mouth. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> no, I was like, man, I fucking tats, bro. Cool, man. He's cool, man. I thought, right. I thought it was cool, but I thought, I was like, man, I'm going to keep my distance because I'm, unsure, I'm unsure about this guy. Right? And then I got to know you and like, you were, you're just, you're a good person. You know what I mean? Like genuinely. You, I appreciate you're that. You're a good person. So. Yeah, I try not to be a dick. No, 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 no. But I can't You can be. be a dick. Absolutely. Believe me, I can be a dick too. Yeah. I asked my girlfriend right now and she said, I, you know, I care about her and I, you know, I love her and. Some days I get up and I'm just a fucking dick, man. Like I'm just an asshole. Just for no reason though. Not like not like in a bad asshole way, but kinda like distant way. Like when you don't talk to your female girlfriend or whatever, they think you're a big asshole. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But I just I guess that's something else I've been working on myself too, is how I, I how I deal with other people, how I respond to other people's things. Yeah. Try to keep my mouth shut a little bit longer yeah. and think a little bit more before I speak. It's tough. Yeah. And I try to, I don't know, man, I've, just, I've gotten really, I've got a lot of compliments about it lately, which yeah. really means that it's working. You know what I'm saying? Because they're like, you've become more patient. This situation happened and I figured this would go this way, but it didn't, which surprised me. That type of stuff. Yeah. And I think that's from this. I think a lot of it's from this, man. It's from some of y'all that sit there and y'all have this compassion and this way about you that makes me see and think other things. And if I didn't respect each of you to have you sit there, I wouldn't call you here anyways. Mm -hmm. So it's picking your brain that I want. You know, it's interesting to see what each person's been through. It's just, I don't know. And if I can do all this, why not do it? I don't care if it gets three views. Like I learned some. Yeah. Yeah, me too. It's cool. Because I mean... Like I told you the other day on the phone, I was like, man, I got these anxiety issues. That's why I kept blowing you off. You know what I mean? I blow you off a little bit, blow you off a little bit. I was like, you know what? It, may, it, may, it might not be too bad. You know, and change is good. Change is all right. And this is like a little change for me. And I deal with it. I don't want to leave here and go drink. So it's right. kind of like satisfying to me to accomplish this kind of thing. So That's I good. It. That's I good. Hell yeah. I like to hear that too. Yeah. It's cool. Put you in an uncomfortable situation. Right, right. Get comfortable being uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. That's what they say. That's tough, man. That's hard. This shit's hard. Yeah, that is hard. I be <laughs> yeah. sweating and carrying on. I got this pool of sweat all in my armpit. Yeah, I'm yeah saying, bro. I'm, and I'm like, to... I'm smelling. I'm like, damn, man. Damn, man. Uh, and then you get through it, and you're like, you know what? That wasn't even that bad. Dude, I know. Like, why did I look at it like it was going to be so awful? I do not miss those days having to put paper towels in my armpit so I didn't fucking sweat out <laughs> I used to do that when uh, crack I did that when I didn't have pills man yeah I used to sweat bad. your balls off oh my god it's horrible I hate that shit man yeah man the, the, the withdrawals are like one of the worst things but I think also the withdrawals is what brings us back we hate the drugs after a while bro you hate the unless you love the chaos you get tired of chasing mm-hmm. and then once you get tired of chasing now you're just doing it to feel normal and it's only the withdrawals that make you come back 
Yeah. If you can learn how to get around the withdrawals, if there was a magic pill to stop the withdrawals, then we could stop the whole world from using. Yeah. Temporarily, at least. Mm -hmm. Because that's what makes you go back. Mm -hmm. Like, if you just knew you could snap your fingers and feel better, you'd be like, fuck it. But nobody wants to do the work. Right, yeah. For sure. Because it's work. Mm -hmm. Spend as much time getting sober as you spend getting high. Because how much time did you spend getting high? Every dollar, every minute. Every day. Of my life. Every day. If I spend half of that trying to do something that's productive and has a chance of being successful, it will be. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. For sure. <laughs> so, yeah, man, do you want to you want to drop a, a link, a Facebook link, anything like that you want me to leave for you so people can find you or no? Uh, yeah, if they wanted to reach out, it was, they'll figure it out. Okay. That's cool. Cause it, cool. I can I can put your name in the title there, right? Yeah, you can put Buddy Worth on there. There we go. Well, that's, that's cool. what your Facebook right. is. Yeah, don't go looking for my my guy. Yeah, you might get a message or two though, man. I'm still getting some from a podcast I did a year ago. Yeah, you know, some people will just reach out and be like, "Yo, your your story said this to me, and it said that to me, and keep doing your thing, man." I, and that's cool when they do that. I think it's awesome. Yeah, I mean, I do that sometimes. If right. I see somebody like on Facebook, and sometimes I do scroll through TikTok, and I have those will come up. Because I've responded on some of them, like, hey, man, it's awesome. Congratulations. Right. Man, whatever. Or, hey, keep your head up. Yeah, man. And that, that's a, that means a lot. When you're on the other end of that and you receive that comment, it says something to you, doesn't it? Hell yeah. Yeah. It, it, yeah, it cool. makes you it makes you think like, yo, that, that they actually watched that. It actually hit them enough that they took the time to send this message. I think that's dope. Yeah. That's yeah, cool. Awesome. All right. Well, thanks for coming, bro. I got a uh -huh. tattoo in probably 30 minutes or something, but we will. Smoke a cigarette here real quick. And okay. Let's do it. So like, subscribe, man. I think Buddy come in and kept it real, man. This is an honest dude. I've known him for a while. And uh, I knew he had good shit to say. That's why I brought him. So leave a like, drop a comment. If you want to send him a message, you can do that too. Later. <laughs>